Now, let H be SL2R, set of real two by two matrices with determinant equal to one. We wanna show that H is a normal subgroup of G equal to GL2R, the group of real two by two matrices with non-zero determinant. So these are our invertible matrices. First, H is a subset of G. So if my determinant is equal to one, it's definitely not equal to zero. And H is non-empty. So it contains the identity element, which has determinant equal to one. To show the subgroup property, so we want to show that H is a group living inside the larger group G. We need to show closure under matrix multiplication and taking inverses. So if I want to show that H is a group, well, we're going to get associativity for free as a subset of G. And to get the identity element, if we have both of these properties, we know H is not empty. So there's some element little h in there. Closure under inverse says little h inverse is in there. And then little h times little h inverse gives me the identity. Since we're closed under matrix multiplication, okay, our identity is actually an H. Now, to show the closure under matrix multiplication, I'm gonna pick A and B and H. So that means both have determinant equal to one. Take their product, we wanna see if the product lives in H. So we wanna see if the product has determinant equal to one also. So, take the determinant, we apply our rule that says we could take Okay, determinant of a product is the same as product of the determinants. Then each of these is equal to one, so we get one times one is one. So A times B is an H, so we're closed under multiplication. For closure under inverses, we have our property determinant of A inverse equals one over determinant of A. So we're gonna get one over one, so the determinant of A inverse is one. So that means A inverse it's gonna also be an H. To show the normal subgroup property, we pick G in our group G, H in our subgroup H. We compute GHG inverse. We wanna show that that's in our subgroup H. Now, in our case, G is gonna be an invertible matrix. H is gonna have determinant equal to one. I wanna compute GHG inverse and show that its determinant is also equal to one, so it winds up in SL2R. Now, we compute. Well, my product rule says I can pull this apart, so we get this over here, and then I note determinant of G inverse is equal to one over determinant of G, so the first and third terms cancel. That leaves me with determinant of H. By assumption, that's equal to one, so that means G, H, G inverse is in H, so H is gonna be a normal subgroup in G. Now, another way to think of normal subgroups, a normal subgroup is gonna be the kernel of some homomorphism. So, let's recall what we're doing here. For a homomorphism, I'm gonna have a map pi going from group G into group G prime the homomorphism property says, if you take pi of g1, g2, that's equal to pi of g1 times pi of g2. So the idea here is, if I apply pi to a product, that's gonna be the same as if we applied pi and then took the product. Then the kernel is just gonna be a set of all elements in the group on the left that map over to the identity in the group on the right. So that looks like this. That's gonna be a normal subgroup. Now, in our case, our homomorphism sitting right in front of us. So if you note, we have the determinant map. That's gonna carry, okay, the group GL2R, the invertible matrices, into R star. So that's gonna be the real numbers, but we throw away zero. This is gonna be a group under multiplication. Now, if you note, Determinant is gonna be a homomorphism. Okay, that's from the product rule. So I'll have determinant of A times B, 
is equal to determinant of A times determinant of B. So that checks out. Now, what's the identity on the right-hand side? Well, for multiplication of real numbers, minus zero, the identity is going to be one. So for the kernel, we're just going to look for all matrices where the determinant is equal to one. And that's precisely our SL2R. So it's another way to show that that's a normal subgroup. Now, before we get to our final question, let's get an idea of what it means for a matrix to be in GL2R and SL2R. If we're in GL2R, the determinant is non-zero. So for the matrix A, B, C, D, call our column vectors V1 and V2. To have the determinant non-zero, it says that V1 and V2 form a linearly independent set. Now, since we just have two vectors, that means V1 is not a multiple of V2. So if I had determinant of our matrix equal to zero, that just says that V1 and V2 are gonna live on the same line. If we're in GL2R, so our determinant's not equal to zero, then our two vectors are not on the same line, which means we could form a parallelogram. From that, we can interpret determinant as follows. So there's gonna be two pieces here. First part of the determinant, the sign. If we draw an arrow going from V1 to V2, if we're going in the counterclockwise direction, okay, we'll catch that when the determinant is greater than zero. If we have it going in the clockwise direction, that's gonna mean the determinant is less than zero. For the second part, if we take the absolute value of the determinant, that's gonna give us the area of the parallelogram with edges V1 and V2. Now, what happens if we're in SL2R? Now, everything from before applies. Since the determinant's equal to one, that means determinant's greater than zero. So that's always gonna mean that V1 and V2, okay, always go in this direction. So it preserves orientation. And then the area of the parallelogram is always gonna be equal to one. Now, for an example of this, let's take a look at the diagonal matrix minus two, minus a half. So if we draw in V1 and V2, make a parallelogram, which is a rectangle, Okay, the area of that parallelogram is gonna be equal to one, as promised. And then, you'll note, if we take V1 going to V2, that direction is gonna be pointing in the counterclockwise direction. So, orientation is preserved.